Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Tender Hearted Ministries. I am Evangelist Cynthia Lyons. Thank you for joining me today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, let's rejoice and be glad in it. There is a word from the Lord. Oh yes, there is. There's a word, a quick, quick word. So please get your Bibles, get your swords in your hand, get your word. There's power in the word of God. Oh yes, there is. There's promises in God's word for you and for me. There are promises in this word. Get your Bible, read that Bible. Download that app. Amen, amen, amen. Now, please, please hit the share button. There's a quick, quick word. I had to share this word earlier in the week. So I want to just share a little bit of this word with you. It blessed me and I know it'll bless you. Amen. So go with me to Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. I'm reading from the King James uh, Bible. It is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Amen, amen. And the word of God reads, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Amen, amen, amen. And the word of God is already blessed. Amen. This word really blessed me. I mean, when I read it, and then I, you know, when I'm studying, I'll just read the entire book because I want to understand what the word is saying. When you look at this, Paul was writing from a Roman prison. Amen. And he wanted to encourage us in our walk. He wanted to strengthen us in our walk. So when you look at chapter one through three, you'll see that Paul was so happy. In fact, he got himself so happy that he praised God before he even finished writing it in Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. So he was telling us about our access and what Christ Jesus, what Jesus did for us on Calvary's cross. Amen. He was letting us know how we have access to the Father, all the benefits. And you know what? He was giving us benefits as to being part of the family. That's what I want to talk about today. We are family. Oh, yes, we are. You are my sister and you are my brother in Christ Jesus. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yeah, we are family. Paul starts out by saying, walk worthily in this uh, chapter in verse one. He starts out by saying in this chapter to walk worthily worthily of your calling. You know, all of us have a calling. All of us are called to walk this walk. And that walk means a lifestyle. He's talking about a lifestyle and he's telling us to walk worthy of our calling. You see, it's specific. Your calling may not be my calling. We are not carbon copies of one another. We are different. We are fearfully and wonderfully made with a divine purpose. Paul encourages us to walk worthily. Now, looking at these verses here, Paul starts out by saying, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from us with all malice. You see, Paul is talking to believers. You know, he, he's, he's telling us not to walk as the Gentiles walk. You know, those who don't know God, those who are not in relationship with God. You see, when people see us, they should see See Jesus. When they see us, they should see something is different about him or something is different about her. We cannot entertain 
things as the world entertains it. It tells us here in this chapter to take off the old man and be renewed in our mind. See, we have to let those things go. And what he says, when he says, put it away, he's not saying pack up your clothes and put them away like we do winter clothes or summer clothes when we pack up stuff and we put it away. No, we're not going to get this back. We're not going to use it again. Paul is saying, don't entertain these things. They will come to us, but we cannot entertain it. When we recognize it, we have to be intentional. We have to take it to God. We have to take it to God. We have to release it and we cannot walk in it. When when people see us, they should see the fruit of the spirit because our minds have been renewed. We take off the old and we put on the new. Amen. We take off the old and we put on the new. Next, Paul says, be kind to one another. Isn't that something? Be kind. He has to tell us to be kind because I've never seen so many people that claim that Jesus is their Lord and Savior and they are mean as a snake. Be kind. We have to be intentional to be kind. I have to catch myself sometimes. Sometimes when I'm in pain, when I'm in pain, the words that I speak, you know, they come out harshly and I have to watch myself. Amen. Especially when I'm talking to my husband, I'm talking to my children. I have to be intentional. So we have to be aware of, you know, it's not saying that we won't have trouble. It's not saying that some things will make us angry. In fact, the word of God tells us here in this very chapter to get angry, but sin not. You see, it can't come out of our mouth. It cannot come out of our mouth. We cannot entertain those things. And I have to be aware of it myself. So I know this thing is real. I know we have so so many super, super saints that are so, so holy that they say they don't entertain this. Paul is talking to believers. Oh, yeah. we Paul's talking to believers. So it's not saying that these things won't come in our life because they will. You know, we will things will come in our life. It says to be tenderhearted. That's the name of this ministry. Amen. That's the name of this ministry. This tenderhearted is not weak. Some people look at being tenderhearted as being weak. No, this tenderhearted is compassion with action. Yeah, compassion with action. Jesus was compassionate. Yeah, he was tenderhearted. He he healed the sick. He raised Lazarus from the dead. And it says that Jesus wept because his heart was touched. Our Savior was tenderhearted. Oh yeah, he fed the 5,000 because his heart was touched. Amen. Jesus was compassionate and he is our great example. Amen. Amen. He is who we strive to be like. Amen. He is, you know, our father. Well, God, the father sent Jesus as an example for us that we could walk this walk, that we can live a victorious life. Jesus showed us how to be compassionate and, and uh, tender hearted, compassion with action. And then it says, forgiving one another. This is a biggie forgiving one another because people can be mean even saints can hurt saints you know it's so much church hurt out there and so many people have turned away from the lord because of church hurt they were hurt right in the church it hurt right in the church where you're supposed to exhibit love but we're all broken people we, you know, church is a hospital. Yes, it is. It's not an excuse, but we have to release it to God. Mother Brown used to say, leave them in the hands of the Lord. Yes, that's what we, we can't hold it in our heart because the word of God says we have to forgive just as God for Christ's sake has forgiven us. God will not forgive us if we don't forgive one another. So it is important to let that go. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let nobody make me bust hell wide open. Oh, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to give it to the Lord. And God will shed his love in your heart, in my heart, by the Holy Spirit. People can be mean. People can be wretched. People can cut you so deep and break your heart. 
Give it to God. Let it go. It will hinder your walk with the Lord if you don't let it go. If I don't let it go, we have to let it go. Amen. 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 Why? Because we are family. Praise God. Now, I need you. If you have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, uh, please go to my website. I will offer Christ to you. Tenderheartedministries.net. Amen. Tenderheartedministries.net. I wanted to get that in there before the video ended on some sites. Praise God. But here, lift up your hands and say, I surrender. I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior today. I confess him today. Pray this prayer with me. Father God, I ask for forgiveness of my sins. And I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. So I confess him with my mouth. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead and your word declares that I shall be saved. So thank you, God, for saving me in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise God. You are saved. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the body of Christ. Join me next week at 9 a.m. for a quick uplifting walk in God's word. And I want you all to give. We're coming up on the holidays and we really want to be a blessing to those in need. Amen. I want to really bless our seniors. So many are on fixed income and they cannot afford a real thanksgiving meal let's bless our seniors please give this is tender-hearted ministries compassion in action god bless you i will attach the link please give god bless you and you have a wonderful week walk in victory power and love amen